हेलो क्लास ट्वेल्थ वेलकम बैक टू अवर चैनल शिक्षक जंक्शन क्योंकि अब नहीं तो कब दिस इज आयुषी अग्रवाल आई एम हेयर स्टडिंग अवर टॉपिक ऑन द ह्यूमन रिप्रोडक्शन बाय नो व्हाट वी हैव टॉक्ड अबाउट इज वी हैव टॉक्ड अबाउट द गैमेटोजेनेसिस पार्ट विद इन विच वी हैव डिस्कस्ड अबाउट द स्पर्मेटोजेनेसिस एंड द ऊ जेनेसिस दैट मीन्स वी हैव टॉक्ड अबाउट द मेल एंड द फीमेल Uh, gametes and how they are made within the system this all we have talked about now it's time to study the menstrual cycle which happens or which takes place actually within the female primate so as it is very obvious from the figure also that we are going to study this so let's get started with this very important cycle okay acha before starting this topic let me make you very clear that you all are free to ask your doubts and yes if not then if till now you have not subscribed to our channel do that otherwise you are going to miss a lot many important sections to discuss okay so moving on to our reproductive cycles that is the menstrual cycle in the females let us start the discussion on this topic now before starting the details let me provide you with some of the brief points this is the reproductive cycle specially in the females and that to the primate female okay it is the reproductive cycle in the primate females now what these primate females are how can you term that so primate females are for example in case of apes okay these are primate females then it comes out to be another example is of monkeys these are also primate animals then obviously the human so these are some of the examples of the primate females where this reproductive cycle take place okay now this reproductive cycles consists of three phases that are very obvious from the figure that is why i have shown you this cycle it consists of three phases and all the three phases we are going to talk about in detail what are the three phases the very first phase is this menstrual phase so again i am using the figure in order to make you understand what it is okay it, it starts with the menstruation or the menstrual phase the second phase that comes is this follicular phase okay this follicular phase is also known as the other name of this follicular phase is what it is proliferative phase okay this is the second name of this particular phase proliferative phase what happens and why it is known as this proliferative phase that we will understand after a few minutes but let me just brief you okay the third phase is this luteal phase and this luteal phase the other name of this luteal phase is the secretory phase see you have to keep an eye over the video continuously because i am writing with respect to the figures which i have shown you in the particular screen or in the particular layer that is why i am giving you lot many figures to make you clear of only one particular topic so that you might not be confused and whichever is feasible to you you may keep it in your mind to understand the things better now after these three phases a very generalized point about this menstrual cycle is it occurs at an interval of say 28 to 29 days okay within the females and it is an indicative of normal healthy female this all you might have studied in your lower standards also hai na it is an indicative of the normal healthy female especially the healthy reproductive cycle in case of females hai na this is also very important right uh, menstrual cycle is indicative of the normal healthy reproductive phase and this reproductive cycles it extends during a particular lifetime and the period during which this particular uh, menstrual cycle remains is termed between the mean arc and menopause these are the two terminologies during which the menstrual cycle within the female lasts mean arc is when the menstrual cycle gets start at the age of the puberty in the females and menopause is at the age of 50 years approximately this menstrual cycle stops so this these are the two lifetime periods during which this menstrual cycle lasts 
now this after this whole of the introduction part about this menstrual cycle let us focus our attention to the three phases which i have shown you in this menstrual wheel and for that again i'll be referring to you a certain figure which obviously you might not find here but yes now you will be able to get it what that particular figure is from this figure we are going to learn what actually are the phases of this menstrual cycle okay so we will talk about three phases of the menstrual cycle and the very first phase which is obviously not given in the figure is the menstrual phase itself after this menstrual phase the cycle will be or this particular what you can see figure is important to you but before that let us study about this menstrual phase because it is the first phase or you can say the st cycle starts with this menstrual phase so the menstrual flow occurs and it lasts for approximately 3 to 5 days okay now why this flow happens it is due to the result or it is it results due to what due to breakdown of the endometrial lining of the uterus endometrial uterus lining breaks down and then it comes out in the form of the menstrual flow now what this endometrium uterus lining is we have already talked about when we have discussed our female internal organs in the detail or female reproductive system in detail there i have talked to you in detail about this endometrial lining okay so when the breakdown of this endometrial lining occurs and the blood vessels comes out in the form of liquid then we say it is the menstrual phase and it lasts for about 3 to 5 days within the normal human or within the normal females okay now this menstrual phase it occurs when the released ovum we all know what ovum releasing of ovum is it is actually the ovulation part that i will talk about when we will discuss the follicular phase in detail but yes when the released ovum is not fertilized then obviously it comes out along with the endometrial inner lining of the uterus with the blood vessels and the ovum also comes out and the special case is when this ovum is not fertilized that is why it may be not wrong to say that the lack of the menstruation may be indicative of what it may be indicative of an event that is known as pregnancy okay because then the ovum gets fertilized and then obviously the inner lining of our uterus will not come out as a menstrual flow other than that this is not the heart and soul symptom t if menstruation is not happened this is only the certain case it might be possible during the stress conditions also okay during the stress conditions also it might be the condition that may happen or during the severe health problems also this may be the cause so this is not the 100% reason but yes there are some other health issues due to which this menstrual phase or this menstrual cycle gets abrupted okay so this is the first phase now talking about the second phase that is the follicular phase okay as i have told you from the menstrual wheel also this is the follicular phase that we have to discuss now now this follicular phase is very apt and clear from this figure itself what it is that we will try to understand from this figure only okay so now to study the follicular phase in detail let me again clean the screen and we will now solely focus on this particular figure see before discussing this follicular phase you have to get back to the previous lectures which i have already explained you in detail what happens during the ovulation part i have already explained you just try to remember with the whatever i am writing here okay what happens is the primary follicles are formed within the ovary we have talked about this right so the primary follicles in the ovary grow and they they become mature to form what it is known as the graafian follicle just remember the terminologies from the previous lectures which you have already studied on the channel if not just you have to study there is no other option okay so these primary follicles see again from the figure this is the primary follicle 
primary follicles mature to form what it is known as this graphene follicle now during this proliferation time what happens is endometrium of the uterus also proliferates or it also regenerate whatever endometrium lining has degenerated during the menstrual cycle it again starts to regenerate see i have told you uh, in the starting of the video or in the starting of the lecture that i will let you know why this follicular phase is known as the proliferative phase because this either it be the case of graphene follicle or endometrium lining they all proliferate or they all increases in size that is how the name goes okay so endometrium lining of the uterus also regenerates and the graphene follicle also becomes mature what happens during this time is the changes in the uterus and the ovary see this is the changes in the uterus and as well as in the ovary why because the primary follicle is getting mature so this uterus and ovary undergoes certain changes due to the release of hormones through the two systems and what are these two systems these are the pituitary gland in the body as well as the ovarian hormone it is a joint venture of our endocrine system and our reproductive system that the hormones get released during this follicular phase which in turn leads to the ruptured follicle or the ovulation process now in order to make you understand of the hormones system we will try to relate this particular figure with yet another figure and for that i just have to uh, give you both the figures here side by side so that you may notice what are the things which i am trying to explain you see from the previous figure i have explained you what happens is the mature graph graphene follicle is formed and what happens is due to the release of certain hormones this ovulation process occurs and what are those hormones these are these luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone again you have to go back to the previous lecture and then you have to recall whatever we have discussed okay so this fsh and this lh gets its peak at the mid of the cycle see at day 14 here also day 14 is important here also it is written this day 14 is important and you know? that means something is important with this particular day what it is at approximately during this period of time what happens is this follicle stimulating hormone and this luteinizing hormone are at its peak that means they are secreted to the maximum level and secretion of the hormones at this maximum level is known as lh surge okay very obvious from the figure again this lh is at its peak this red line you can see and this green line is also you can see all the hormones at are at its peak where during this ovulation phase so during this phase when this graphene follicle releases the ovum you all know what ovulation is hai na this is the ruptured follicle that is left behind and the ovum is released this is the ovum that is released and that is why we call this process as the ovulation so approximately in the middle of the cycle that is at day 14 due to the lh surge or due to the increase in hormones to its peak this ovulation happens okay so this up till this point it is known as the follicular phase now what happens next next what happens is that comes is this luteal phase you can see from the figure very clearly mentioned here also it is very clearly mentioned this luteal phase hai na don't uh, go to the this teda meda figure or what you can say this rough sketching that i am doing it is because i am speaking also so my concentration little bit shifts when i am writing and when when i am explaining okay just focus on the point theek hai so during this phase this ovum has released and what this ruptured follicle or the remaining parts of the graphene follicle gets transformed into it gets transformed into what it is known as this corpus luteum this also this terminology also we have discussed in our previous lectures this corpus luteum is very important it secretes another hormone which is known as this 
progesterone okay progesterone or progesterone whatever you can say it is progesterone this is the main role of corpus luteum actually this progesterone hormone helps in maintaining this corpus luteum layer okay or the endometrium lining which in turn is very important if at all there is a fertilization why because this corpus luteum or the endometrium lining is to be maintained for the implantation part that we will talk about about in our next lecture okay so this corpus luteum secretes this progesterone there which is important see here also the peak of progesterone does not occur during ovulation but it happens during this luteal phase why because corpus luteum is getting secreted that is why this name comes luteal phase from the corpus luteum right so if the fertilization happens this progesterone helps in maintaining the pregnancy but if not the endometrium lining first regenerates and then as it goes on to the end of this menstrual cycle that is approximately at day 26 or 24 this all the levels of the hormone goes on decreasing see the level of hormones here you know they are getting to be decreased and they are decreased then this endometrium lining comes out see it is degenerating first it is early then it is fully formed then it degenerates simultaneously when it comes to the end so it comes out in the form of the menstrual flow that is known as the menstrual cycle so again after luteal phase it goes back to the menstruation here it is okay so that is how the three phases continue what is important here to note is all the three phases and what are the hormonal changes that goes on with these phases okay i'll explain you once more what are the hormonal changes and now i'll change the color so that you may get to know whatever it is let me change the color and this time i'll take a blue color okay ha huh. to so where were we we were uh, explaining or we were trying to understand what is this actually the role of the hormones so during the mid of the cycle when this ovulation happens this lh surge takes place in which the two hormones that is the follicle stimulating hormone and the luteal luteinizing hormone at its peak due to which the ovulation happens and this corpus luteum gets formed or this corpus luteum is this ruptured follicle or the remainings of the graafian follicle which then maintains into this corpus luteum structure if at all fertilization happens this corpus luteum is maintained and it helps in the implantation part of the zygote but if not as the menstrual cycle or as the phases continues this progesterone goes on in order to maintain the corpus luteum but at the end of this phase that is at this particular point the corpus luteum degenerates all the levels of the hormones falls and it ultimately comes out as a blood along with the uh, blood vessels that are there in the endometrial lining and that is known as the menstrual cycle sorry so this is all what happens during this particular phase okay so i think that you might be clear off with the with respect to these figures whatever i'm trying to explain you in the next lecture we will talk about the fertilization and the implantation part that will again is very important topic and you will know how the single cell will lead to the development of the whole organism and a very important part okay so we will meet in our next lecture till then stay safe take care have a good day bye bye thank you